Good evening, I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. There's bad news from Afghanistan. The Taliban, a martyr attack. Six dead. Six coalition soldiers dead. The Taliban overrunning another district headquarters in the southern part of Afghanistan. Helmand Province is said to be on the brink by the deputy governor of Helmand Province. Afghanistan is trembling. At the same time, in Syria and in Iraq and in Yemen, the civil wars burn on without obvious conclusion. We're looking at the year 2016, a lot of war fighting. We also have an election. And the candidates for the presidency in 2016 and the significant posts in the Senate and the House will speak to war fighting. They will also speak to themes that are said to be close to the American people. One, of course, the recovery from the Great Recession. Mrs. Clinton was on the stage on Saturday night with Bernie Sanders and Governor O'Malley speaking about 2016 and her campaign. The question is, is she running for the Democratic nomination or is she already running for president? Is she already speaking as if she's in the Oval Office as the 45th president of the United States? And what did we learn from Mrs. Clinton about the war in Afghanistan, the war in Mesopotamia, the the conflict across the Ummah. What did we learn from Mrs. Clinton about her prospective economic policies, about the recovery, about the middle class? My professionals are here to join us, David Drucker of the Washington Examiner, and John Fund of the National Review Online, and my colleague and co-host, Thaddeus McCotter, WJR, the great voice of the Great Lakes. Gentlemen, a very good evening to you. I begin with you, David, because in watching Mrs. Clinton's performance on Saturday night, I saw her very much addressing the United States of America, the Democrats, but through the Democrats, the independents, those votes that are not committed to the Republican or Democratic Party, as if she's starting her general campaign. How did you regard her presentation, David? Is it polished? Does she already know where she's going? Good evening to you. Good evening, John. And look, I, you know, I don't think that she's always as polished as she is at other points, but I, I think it's clear that she's already looking ahead to the general election. And on domestic matters, she is checking her left flank to make sure that she doesn't completely underestimate and ignore Bernie Sanders. But her positioning is in between Sanders and the Republicans, and that's on purpose. Number one, is what she's good at. Number two, uh, she believes the same as we all do, that she's going to be the Democratic nominee. And right now, she can hardly believe her luck. Uh, Donald Trump's leading the field, and that's who they want to get. And her use of Donald Trump's name, David, was it just because he's topical and she was trying to stay involved, s similar to that Star Wars reference at the end, trying to be hip? No, it's because, number one, anytime Trump's in the media, the other Republican candidates, uh, some of whom can beat her, are not. And if she can get Trump all riled up, he'll take up more media time the way he tends to do. That keeps his competitors out of the limelight. And if she can contrast her, contrast herself to Trump, she not only looks good to Democrats, which is obvious, but she looks good to some Republicans. I'd point out in the latest Fox News national poll, the national polls aren't necessarily useful in gauging a primary since it's state by state, but not only was she beating Trump by 11 percentage points, in that poll she had 15 percent of, of Republicans voting for her. Trump was at 72 percent with his own party. You're not going to win an election if that's how it goes, and that's why the Democrats are so excited uh, about the prospect that Trump might win. And, and if he doesn't win the nomination, they're convinced and I don't know if this is correct, but they are convinced that he's been so out there and is so well-known because of his celebrity that it's going to be hard for the Republican nominee to shake him. I'll turn you over to Thaddeus in just a moment, gentlemen. But, Mr. Fun, quickly, Mrs. Ken Mrs. Clinton's presentation on Saturday night, could we discern major themes in her presentation for the general campaign? Yes. Republicans are evil. Uh, Republicans want to take away all of your rights if you're a veteran, if you're a woman, if you're gay. And I have lots of solutions, and I'm pretty happy with Barack Obama, but we'll tweak things just a little. Uh, did, you, did, did she strike you as relaxed, John, in her presentation? Relentless. Um, she's a very effective deliverer of a message, almost robotically. Um, you know, some of the atmospherics was false. I mean, the, the, 
the bizarre point of showing up late for the debate. I can't remember the last time in American history that happened. Thaddeus, your questions for our gentleman. Uh, gentlemen, do you think that in the coming general election, whoever she runs against, we've seen polls talk about people questioning her veracity, her trustworthiness. Have you ever seen in American history, with the exception of maybe Richard Nixon, someone who has been in the national spotlight so long, still trying to create a persona and more intimate connection with the American people at this late date of her political career? David? Well, it's a tough question to answer. I mean, look, I, I think that it, I think you're on to something in that. I don't think we've seen somebody like Mrs. Clinton in a while, who's been in the national spotlight in a variety of ways, still sort of looking for the sweet spot in terms of who she is and how she's going to relate to people. But don't forget, presidential elections are about a choice between two candidates. They're not choices made in a vacuum about candidate qualities. So if she runs against somebody that the American people can relate to and connect to, then she's got a problem. But if she runs against somebody that they find unreasonable or not up to the job of being president for whatever reason that may be, then I think she's going to have a leg up because, you know, one thing the American people tend to do is um, they tend to settle generally on somebody who's more presidential than the other guy or the other woman. Um, and, you know, that's where, depending on who she runs against, it could make up for her deficiencies in terms of someone who people question her, her truthfulness and don't necessarily like her. John? I think Hillary Clinton is clearly based, moving towards the left for the primary, the middle for the first part of the campaign, and she will finish by saying, I'm the most experienced candidate, and the Republican is callow, and the Republican doesn't know how to lead, and the Republican has a lot of extremist friends that he's going to listen to. It's a very simple message, and it's get out the vote, and she knows it's going to be a close election. She probably can't win with more than 51 or 52%, but she will squeeze that pineapple. David, did you hear Mrs. Clinton concerned about the left on Saturday night? Uh, does she have to do more than just be the Democratic uh, at the top of the Democratic ticket? Well, look, I think what she has going for her is the two Democrats that are running against her that, that, you know, one clearly is to her left, and the other is definitely trying to get to her left. Um, I, I just don't think Democrats really see as a president. I mean, Bernie Sanders' numbers are good in New Hampshire, but at the end of the day, he's not going to be here. Uh, and Clinton has been smart in that she's moved to the left to make sure that he can't completely outflank her and can't pull off any surprises. So then what she's left with doing and I think she's giving us a preview of what the, the general election would look like um, in certain cases, is basically presenting, trying to present the picture of somebody who is measured and responsible and presidential. Um, and the one thing she has going for her is she has a vast amount of experience. And if she's running against somebody that, is seen, that, that seems to the public as a little bit off balance and off kilter, what she essentially has to say is, you don't possibly want to give the nuclear code to that guy. And I think that's what she's hoping for. Now, if she runs against somebody else in a general election um, that can come across as measured and presidential and in command, then she's going to have a problem because then her likability deficiencies and, and you know, problems with the truth um, you know, can catch up to her. But in a primary, in her primary, she's running against nobody really that can take her out. This is not 2008 where besides President then Senator Obama, you had a couple of other plausible candidates that were at least senators for a long time. I mean, you know, you just you don't have anybody here. David Drucker, John Fund, and my colleague and co-host Thaddeus McCotter discussing Mrs. Clinton's beginning the general campaign on the debate trail for the nomination. When we come back, Mrs. Clinton, who does she want a run against? Who is she going to run against? I know the obvious answer, but what are the other possibilities? I'm John Batchelor.